So, Lori Berkner is the reason I'm doing what I love. But there's also another reason. It's gonna sound crazy, but he's a cat named Gibson. When I was younger, I had two cats, Bubba and Midnight. They were pretty old. They were born in 1996. And when I was 10, I wanted a kitten. And Gibson was, I think, the name I had picked because I had named another cat outside of our house that I wanted to keep really bad, but it wasn't our cat. And I had named him Gibson because, and Gibson turned out to be a girl, that Gibson. Um, we took her to the Humane Society, and it was a female cat that uh, was owned by a mom and her daughter. Um, but anyway, I had gotten the name Gibson from YouTube star Steve Cash. I am going to miss his videos. Really, he had a lot of funny videos. He made a series called the Talking Kitty series, and he named his cat Gibson. And I love the name for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I, I wasn't playing guitar then, so it wasn't the Gibson Guitar Company or anything. But I just love the name Gibson. Um, and I was 10 years old. I adopted a kitten March 6, 2012. And his original name was Webster. I thought that name was cute. And I think I might have kept that as like a nickname for him. But other than that, I was... No matter what his name was, he was going to be Gibson. So I had adopted him. He was very, uh, well, I shouldn't say crazy. He was just a kid and he was three months old. He was born November 26th. And every year I still say happy birthday to him. Um, he was... Uh, my other two cats, Bubba and Midnight, they were my mom's cats, really. They were 16 at the time, and they were really against Gibson being there. Um, Bubba especially. Midnight would just kind of hiss, um, but Bubba was like the queen of the house, I guess. And, uh, yeah, she did not want Gibson there. Uh, but over time, you know, you'd walk by and see them snuggling together. It was really cute. So, what ended up happening, though, was that Gibson was very playful. And he was uh, trying to get my mom's feet three days after we got him. We got him on a Tuesday. This was a Friday. Uh, three days after we got him. And my mom was walking. And he had gotten to grab her feet and something happened. I don't know the whole detail because I couldn't see it I was in the other room but I was I was there but I couldn't see it so basically she had tripped over him I think like she accidentally sort of kicked him in a way but it gave him like a brain injury and he was he didn't purr anymore uh I don't know if that did something to him purring I don't know how that works but um he had to relearn everything. He had to relearn how to eat and drink and everything. And uh, so he he and I, after that, kind of really connected because I think he was in a way disabled. I'm disabled. I mean, we had such a connection that he... See, here's the thing with Gibson. He became very nasty. After that injury, he started being, um, he would scratch the heck out of an adult, and he would hiss, and the vet, he hated the vet, he was, I guess Peanut's getting jealous, he was so, he, they all, I swear, they thought he was, like, uh, dangerous towards me, but he wasn't, he really wasn't, he was, he wasn't nice, nice, like, he didn't come up and snuggle but he didn't he wasn't as nasty with me he was really like he he was careful with me it was like he knew that I couldn't see he obviously knew something which would kind of surprise me because he was injured he really couldn't know anything so what happened with him was that he was so nasty that people like my mom and dad, they would think, oh, Gibson's got to go back to the store. Like, we got him at this uh, thrift store. 
And he, I didn't want him going back. I was not getting rid of him. I knew that this was not, he was not behaving like this because he wanted to. He didn't want to. But he, I just remember I would look at him and I would say, he's, he doesn't want to live like that. But he can't control that. He's just a cat. He's, he doesn't know what's going on. And the thing with Gibson was he, he was, um, like I said, if he scratched me, you would think he was just playing around. If he looked at it, I mean, you would think we were, you know, we were just hanging out and he scratched me, you know? So it wasn't anything. So I had to figure out how to tell people like, hey, Gibson's not like that with me. So we never got rid of him, and I'm really glad we didn't. And he ended up getting sick in 2014. He was always getting eye infections and things like that. But I think he got something worse than what anybody thought, even the vet. And he ended up having uh, this eye infection and then something else. Like he stopped eating and stuff like that, and he wouldn't move. And... Um, in April uh, 2014, April 8th, 2014, I went to school. I did everything I had to do. It was a normal Tuesday. And then all of a sudden I was doing, I had just gotten done with homework. I was watching TV. And I get this feeling like I'm sitting there and I hear like a voice in my head going, you better go see him. And I'm like, why do I, what, what's going on? What do what the frick's going on? And it's like, you know, you better go see him before it's too late. That's what I was thinking to myself. And I'm like, why am I thinking this? He's Gibson. He's fine. You know, he survived everything that I could think of at this point. I mean, what's going on here? And uh, I went in there and he was breathing really fast. Like I thought maybe I just startled him. And I sat down and I kissed him and he never let me do that. He just, I don't even think he hissed. Although, and if he did, I don't really know. I don't remember. Um, I probably don't want to. Um, but I went in there, I gave him a kiss on the head and I said, Gibson, whatever you do, don't leave us. And I don't know why I, I even thought to myself, like, why am I saying this? And, um. He did, it was three hours later, I would think. I think it was three hours later. He was gone. He uh, waited, it was like he waited until everybody was home. And um, I'm sorry, this is more of like a depressing, serious video, uh, or audio, I should call it. But I just wanted to thank Gibson because of all this depressing stuff, I had wanted to be a vet. I was, um, even after he passed away, I, was uh, I still wanted to do that because I wanted to do it for Gibson in a way. And then I saw a movie that I'm going to get into in the next recording that changed everything. And I thought, okay, what would Gibson want me to do? I don't think Gibson would want me to live each day in fear thinking, who's the next Gibson? Or Bubba or Midnight because they'd passed away after him. Um... Gibson, I love you, and I thank you for not letting me do the job that the vet that took care of you had to do. I I give her so much credit, the vet that took care of him. I mean, when he got hurt, she took him home, and I don't know if she's ever going to see this. Uh, I highly doubt it, but because I haven't seen her. I think she retired or something, but thank you for saving him. And Gibson, thank you for saving me from seeing a thousand little Gibbies. <laughs> That's what we call them, Gibby. A thousand little Gibbies like you. So, let's get into the next one.